We're going to get to the introductions of uh, the, our new chairman of the uh, Democratic Party of the state of Michigan and our Congressman Gary Peters. We're going to lead off with the dean of the Congressional Black Caucus and uh, the man who everybody in here, you're, you're everybody's congressman. I mean, I mean, people in Tunisia and in uh, Argentina and in uh, across the world, you are their congressman. You know, but we really, you, you really are our congressman. So, and, uh, and, 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 and. the voice for the voiceless nationwide. Yes, thank you. Say that. So, Congressman John Conyers. Top of the morning, everyone. Uh, if I were smarter, I would sit down right now and let you imagine that I said something brilliant that justified uh, all of the overly generous comments that I've received today. Uh, I start off by looking around at this audience. Uh, this is such a, an important gathering. What a, a brilliant idea it was. I think it was Dr. Wendell Anthony uh, that thought that this would be an a, a even more efficacious way to share these issues and thoughts that everybody brings together. I, I thank Attorney Hollowell. Many of you don't know the job he does in his capacity as a member of the bar. And I think that's very important. It goes without saying that Gary Peters and I have worked closely together ever since his entry into the House of Representatives. And it has been a very distinguished career that he has built in an incredibly short time. I'm honored that he is here with us. Uh, there is a, a comment made by Keith Gunter of Peace Action that starts us off in the right direction. And, and that is, that is, whoops. But will, it, will it work this yeah, way? Yeah, it works. OK. And that is the, uh, the whole notion that Peace uh, is, uh, you know, we talk about jobs, justice, and peace. That's the, the king mantra. That's what Martin got us into. And it was, it was so important that uh, we not forget that because as you can detect from any kind of international news coverage, there's... Uh, a lot of unrest in the world, and uh, it's it's so critical that we put this boldly uh, on our action agenda. And I'm so glad that Peace Action uh, and those that work with Keith have continued this kind of work because, in the end. Uh, that's where it all has to come down. And so for everybody here, uh, just coming together for a few minutes, <clears throat> I've been uh, making just a few notes that I'm going to run through w with no particular order. Uh, we've got some great speakers here. Uh, Lon Johnson, the head of, well, actually, without being biased, the Republican Party is fading out of sight almost. Uh, so there's only really one major <laughs> uh, political party of any significance. And, and what we've got to do is not just say we're in it, but how do we make it better? How do we really make it mean something to the so many people that say, uh, well, that's okay. Uh,
Peters, you're in the business. You're a politician. That's what you do. Uh, but how do we make it as real as we can for ordinary people that are up against the biggest issue in our country today? Jobs. That's number one. And uh, uh, I, I try to, uh, I'm always extremely polite when I go into the White House, but that's what I try to get to our beloved president, is that how do we create a full employment society, no kidding, not just talking about jobs, but why can't the biggest, most successful economy in civilization create work, meaningful work, for everybody that wants a job in America. That is not a difficult issue. Uh, it's, a, it's a matter of where your priorities are instead of where, where your mouth is. And that's what uh, my number one goal is, is to create a society where full employment, you can look forward to a job. Right now, in this period of austerity, Virgie, what we've got now is people scrambling over the cutbacks. We're, we're, we're in a period where teachers are being laid off. We're in a period where police and firemen are, are having their numbers reduced. It makes absolutely no sense at all, and it's our job uh, not just to uh, lecture conservatives amongst us, but to get with our own leaders and make sure that something happens in this regard. Uh, I am so pleased that we, are, we now have um, uh, some new people coming into the United States Senate. There's a lady there, Warren. Uh, uh, Elizabeth. Yes, Elizabeth Warren, uh, who, who says, what do you mean uh, the people that created this recession from Wall Street are too big to be prosecuted? They, they can go to prison and should for the harm that they've done to millions of people, to the whole economy, as a matter of fact. And so it's in that spirit uh, that I'm proud to join you. I am looking forward to the implementation of the Dodd-Frank bill, the two chairmen of the banking committees in Washington who have uh, fashioned a way for us uh, to uh, regulate uh, these uh, big financial monsters that have had their way uh, for so long. And so I, I close with, with just uh, these brief shout outs. One, I am a proud member of the Progressive Caucus in the House of Representatives, some 70 something people. And, and being progressive goes beyond uh, uh, whether you're a Democrat or not, or uh, whether you're in the NACP, it's it's a it's a way of thinking about things political and non-political. Uh, I am a proud member of the Congressional Black Caucus, uh, which I helped form. Uh, when uh, when I remember, we came excitedly up to Adam, the late Adam Clayton Powell, and said, "Adam, we're going to form the Black Caucus, and and boy, this is going to be great." And Adam, in his way, uh, turned and looked at us and said, "What are you going to do that for? I represent black people in America." <laughs> I swear he said that. I could, I'll never forget it. But, but we put our arms around and we slunk off and formed it anyway. And uh, Adam and Charlie Diggs was there then. And uh, I'm just full of the memories of serving in the Congress 
that make me the second most senior member of the House of Representatives. I really am. I quickly go to a, a, a woman that transfix, I, I can't tell you how electrified I was. Some of you were there when Michelle Alexander came to Detroit to talk about mass incarceration. Remember that day? Oh, uh, uh, the book is powerful, but she's a, a, a magnificent speaker. Uh, and it, it was, it was, a, it made me think about uh, how we have more people incarcerated in America proportionally than any other country on earth. I mean, that's something to think about when we uh, talk about justice and the judiciary and the judges. And uh, 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 I, was, I was in the White House with Congressman Peters when uh, Obama uh, well, it was in the Department of Interior. It was so, the violence against women signing was so large that he, he had to change it from the White House to the Department of Interior because men and women, but mostly women, came in from all over the country uh, to be witness uh, to a, a vow and a promise he made uh, when he campaigned for office. Uh, and he signed that bill, and it was a, a great day and a great moment. I just closed and sat down on uh, this Buck Dinner. <laughs> I, I have to mention the book Buck Dinner because I remember when uh, old man Goodman and uh, Dean Robb is still around, and uh, uh, what a night that was! Uh, I never, I never dreamed that, uh, that the Buck Dinner, in which uh, a few of the progressive lawyers would get together and they'd go hunting, and everybody would bring back whatever they caught or shot, and and cooked it, and that was how it came to be known as the annual Buck Dinner. And here were hundreds and hundreds of people there. Yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, I, I don't know how many was. Oh, gosh, that, that's, that's beyond. So in, anyway, uh, I'm here to celebrate all of you. And uh, I'll close with your question. Thank you very much. God bless your heart. Thank you, Pastor.